Good morning, everybody. My name is Erin, and I am here today to chat with you all about sharks. I'm really excited to get to join you. Um, now, if you have any questions, this is an Ask a Scientist uh, session, so if you have any questions, go ahead and text those questions to this number here, 562-286-1838. Today is Friday morning. It's 9 a.m. Pacific time, so if you are watching us live, text your questions to this number. If you are watching this at another time, time, you can always email us at live at lbaop.org and we will do our best to get back to you. Um, now, like I said, my name is Erin. I run one of our shark research programs here at the aquarium and I love talking about sharks. So I hope you guys will send us all sorts of questions so that we can learn all about them. Now here we have, this is our shark lagoon exhibit. So you can see several types of sharks and actually a really great view of our sea turtle right here in this little cave. Our sea turtle isn't typically visible. I'll step over here so you can see it. Um, it's not typically this visible, so it's really exciting to get to see that sea turtle. But today we're learning about sharks. And right on cue, we have our sand tiger shark swimming past the camera. Now this view of our Shark Lagoon is available on our website, so if you're ever wanting to see what's happening at Shark Lagoon, you can check it out. Here's one of our black tip reef sharks swimming by. Looks like we've got quite a few reef sharks swimming through today. Um, now these are all reef sharks, like I said. We have gray reef sharks like this one, and then we also have the black tip reef shark uh, like this one back here. Um, and this is a warm water exhibit. So all the sharks in here are found in tropical coral reefs. And you can see we do have some artificial coral as well as some other reef fish swimming around through the exhibit. You can see some of those fish in the background. Oh, well, that's a great question. We got some questions about the size of these sharks. Um, so the black tip reef sharks and the gray reef sharks are around five to six feet in length. And then our sand tiger shark, who is... Is this a sand tiger shark? I can't see. Yeah, I think that's a sand tiger shark right there. Um, that's our biggest shark. He's about 10 feet long. So that's our biggest shark here. And we have our zebra shark coming in to say hello. Um, this one's about eight or so feet long. And um, we do have in this exhibit, we'll keep our eyes open to see if we get a chance to see it a little bit later. But we do have our heaviest fish at the aquarium. It's our reticulated whiptail ray. It weighed 400 pounds at its last weigh-in, uh, which was a couple of years ago. So it probably weighs even more now. And here's our sea turtle coming up to say hello. Wow, there's a lot of action this morning in Shark Lagoon. Lots of animals swimming around. Oh, we got some questions about the different ages of our sharks. So it really depends on the species. When we're talking about tropical sharks, most of them will live to be about 30 years old or so. Um, the, there is a, a shark that is the longest living shark um, that we know of. It is the Greenland shark. It lives in cold, cold Arctic waters, and it can live to be about 400 years old. Um, scientists think they aren't even mature until they're about 100 years old. Um, but most sharks, it's typically closer to around 30 years or so. Keep those questions coming. You can text us to 562-286-1838. Um, we got some questions about what do sharks eat? Sharks have a really varied diet. So depending on the type of shark, they might eat different types of food. Um, let's see if we can take an up close look at our sand tiger shark's teeth so that we can see a little bit more about what those teeth look like. Um, our sand tiger shark has teeth that kind of stick out of its mouth a little bit. And those are perfect for grabbing on to things like slippery fish. So so um, some types of sharks will eat that slippery fish, um, just like a, any picture of his face. We've got uh, my friend Luke in here helping to put up some pictures, so we'll see if Luke can find any pictures of uh, our sand tiger shark up close so you can see those teeth. Um, there are other types of sharks, like the zebra shark that we saw swim by, that have very, very small teeth. So their teeth are used for eating things like shrimp and small fish. Um, and then finally, we have sharks like our white shark um, that feed on things like sea lions and big tuna. So they have serrated teeth. The edges are kind of bumpy like a knife, and that helps them to cut their food. So it really depends on what type of shark we're looking at. They can eat anything from shellfish to um, things like bigger animals. Um, we have another question is, do sharks eat other sharks? They absolutely can. So sharks are pretty opportunistic. They'll eat basically whatever it is that they're able to find. Um, we've got 
a video here of our sand tiger shark swimming past the camera. So um, keep an eye out for those teeth. And it'll come in slow motion here. And um, we'll get to see those teeth. Remember, they use their teeth to hold on, um, to bite and swallow their fish. There we go. There's a great view. So they've got all these rows. And you can see they're kind of angled into their mouth a little bit. That helps to make sure that when they grab the fish, the fish doesn't swim away. We're also getting a really great view right here. You see all these pores here? Um, these pores are a special sense that sharks have. So they have the ability to sense electricity. Um, these pores are called ampullae of Lorenzini and those ampullae basically sense electrical movements in the water so when your heart beats or when you move you give off little tiny bits of electricity and so that helps them to sense that electricity from things like a fish um, or another prey item and there again you can see those fork-like teeth perfect for holding and then swallowing so they're not going to chew they're not going to take bites they're just going to bite and then swallow and that's how they're able to eat Oh, that's a great question. We had another question of what are other predators of sharks? Um, it really depends on the type of shark that we're looking at. So it could be things like other sharks. Um, another big one is orcas. Orcas will actually feed on adult white sharks. So you think of sharks as being this huge, enormous predator, um, but orcas will actually feed on white sharks. It's been observed a couple of times in the Farallon Islands. Um, of course, though, the biggest uh, risk to sharks is people. So every single year, people fish about 100 million sharks out of the oceans. Um, so they are definitely the biggest risk to sharks. Oh, and the question is, can sharks eat whales? Um, sh so sharks don't, don't typically feed on live whales. They don't typically like take down a whale like the way that we've all seen on, you know, National Geographic or whatever of a orca is taking down something like a um, gray whale or a humpback whale. Sharks don't do that. They're not, that's not really their, what they're meant to do. Um, but they will feed on like if a whale dies and then sinks to the bottom, they'll scavenge on that carcass, definitely. Um, we have a question from Colton wondering, do all sharks need to move in order to survive? That's a great question. Um, there are a lot of sharks that have to swim in order to survive. And the reason for that is that when they swim, um, the water goes in through their mouth and then it passes out over their gills. So if they're not moving forward, then they're not getting the chance to breathe. But there are some sharks, like this zebra shark, that have a special adaptation called a spiracle. Here you can see um, that spiracle. Basically, they use that. It's this hole right behind their eye. And they use that spiracle to pump water in over their gills so they don't have to swim in order to breathe. So there are some types of sharks, like zebra sharks, bamboo sharks, white tip reef sharks, several types of sharks that are able to pump that water over their gills. Um, we have another question that says, do shark fins help them swim faster? That's a great question. Sharks use their fins for a lot of different things, um, depending on the fin. The back fin, that caudal fin, that's what they use to push themselves forward. So they move that side to side, and that's how they get that forward movement. Um, and then they use their side fins or their pectoral fins for steering, so for turning left and right. And then on the very top, they have that dorsal fin, and that dorsal fin helps them to balance. Um, so because of their shape, they need that ability to balance. Now, one thing that we notice is that sharks that swim faster will typically have much taller dorsal fins. Um, so that, that tall dorsal fin helps them to balance if they're swimming really quickly. So other sharks that swim much slower, um, like this leopard shark, doesn't have a very tall dorsal fin. Um, Another thing that we see is that uh, the sharks with a really forked tail or a really forked caudal fin, those are typically going to be really fast moving sharks. Um, so we'll see. I think uh, Luke is seeing if he can find a picture um, of any other sharks so we can see how their fins are a little bit different from the fins of this leopard shark here. Um, leopard sharks are pretty slow moving. They live in kelp forests. All right, here's another shark coming right up so we can take a look. Oh, perfect. Um, so here's a different shark. This is one of our gray reef sharks. You can see that that, top, that front dorsal fin is much larger because it is a faster moving shark. And then um, you can't see it in this picture, but that their tail is much more forked so that they're able to get that speed. We have another question. Mrs. Garcia's class is wondering how many pups can a shark have and how many times a year? That's a really great question. So one thing that we're going to see a lot in this class is that it depends on the species. So there's over 400 
hundred different types of sharks and so they all have a very different biologies and different life histories and sharks can actually reproduce in a couple of different ways so some sharks will lay eggs um, and they'll basically drop an egg um, on a rock or something like that and then they swim away and the egg will hatch in um, you know a month or a couple of months other types of sharks will give live birth so where the baby is born straight from the shark um, and is basically able to take care of itself from right when it's born so it really depends on the type of sharks um, for some sharks like um, white sharks and sand tiger sharks it's estimated that they'll give birth about once every other year um, and it depends on the type of shark for how many babies they can have I know leopard sharks can have like over 20 babies at a time um, Sharks that lay eggs will lay just one egg at a time. So it really depends on the type of shark. There are also sharks that only have one or two babies at a time. Um, so like the sand tiger shark can give birth to only two babies at a time. So it just depends on the shark. And then Mrs. DiCarlo's class is wondering, do sharks lay eggs or do they have babies? That's a great question. Um, we just covered that. So they do sometimes lay eggs. And we might have, let me see if we've got a shark egg here that I can show you. Or Luke might have a picture too. Um, Luke is going to see if he's got a picture. I have a model that we created, so this is not real, um, but this kind of shows what it would look like. So it kind of looks like it almost has like a seaweed like outer layer, but that's actually what the egg is. And then inside is the shark, and the shark is connected to the yolk sac by an umbilical cord. Oh, they're getting feedback. Um, we're going to check out that feedback, see if we can figure out what might be going on. Uh, Mr. Carlo is wondering, do sharks have personalities? Do ours at the aquarium have names? That's a great question. Um, so here at the aquarium, we'd like to try to avoid um, anthropomorphizing sharks too much, or any of our animals for that matter. Um, oh, perfect. Here's an egg, by the way. This is what a real egg looks like. Cynthia helped me find it. Um, these are the tendrils that they use to hold on to the rocks and then this is the egg and this particular one is from a zebra shark. Um, our sharks, that being said though, our sharks here at the aquarium do have, um, definitely they have preferences. So there are certain sharks that are pickier eaters. There are some sharks that maybe will eat anything. Um, maybe they like to spend their time in certain parts of the exhibit. Um, they might have behaviors that are really typical for them, but I'm not sure how much we would call that like their personalities. Um, and ours at the aquarium, many of our sharks here at the aquarium have names. Um, not all of them, but many of them have names. Um, for instance, one of our black tip reef sharks name is Barbara and uh, our sand tiger sharks name is Big Guy. And can sharks sense fear? So sharks have six senses. They have the same five senses that you and I have and they have an extra sixth sense which is their ability to sense electricity. Um, so they do not have the ability to sense fear, um, but they use their, their senses to help them find their food. So they can smell their food, they can see it, they can hear it. Um, that all of their, their six senses basically help them to be able to identify their food and find that food. And here we have a picture of a whale shark with a remora sticking onto the side of it and actually another one on the bottom as well. Oh, that's a great question. We got a question wondering what types of sharks we can find here in Southern California. Um, that's a great question. So here in California, we have a lot of um, like kelp forests. So there are a lot of sharks that are found in kelp forests. Things like leopard sharks, swell sharks, and horn sharks. Um, we'll see if Luke is able to put up any of those pictures. Um, oh. And here's another one. This is not one of those ones I just mentioned. Um, this is another species that lives locally. Um, the adults typically are found off the coast of Central California, so off of places like Moro, Monterey, San Francisco. Um, but we do find babies off the coast of Southern California. So what happens is the sharks um, that are up in Northern California and Central California swim down south to Southern California where the water's a little bit warmer, and they have their babies there, and then they swim back up. So typically in sharks, we see um, a distinction between where the adults feed and where the babies grow up. So that helps to make sure that, um, that the adults don't accidentally feed on the babies. So we don't have very many adult white sharks in this area, but we do have juveniles um, in this area, definitely. 
Are they endangered? That's a great question. Thank you so much. We're getting so many great questions. Um, many shark species are endangered. Um, about, I think it's about 25% of shark species are listed as some degree of endangered, and that's mostly due to unsustainable fishing practices. So they're caught as bycatch, meaning when people go out fishing um, on big commercial fishing operations and they mean to catch something, they accidentally catch sharks as well, and the sharks don't typically survive that. Um, they're also caught through unsustainable fishing where basically we're catching too many at a time. Um, here's a horn shark that lives off of our coast here in Southern California. Um, now I said about 25% are listed as endangered. Another, about 45% are listed as um, basically we don't know enough about them. It's called data deficient. So likely a lot of those species are also endangered, um, but we just don't know enough about their populations to know where they are. So um, that's why studying sharks and shark research is really important so we can learn more about their populations and know the best ways to protect them and how we should uh, work to protect them. Do sharks have bones? That's another great question. I love all these questions coming in. Um, sharks do not have bones. They do have a skeleton, but their skeleton is made up of cartilage. So if you feel how your nose is really wiggly, you feel how your ears are really wiggly, that flexible material is called cartilage, and that's what their skeleton is made up of. Um, it's a little bit lighter than bone, um, and it gives them that kind of flexibility to move through the water. Um, and stingrays, which are close relatives of sharks, also have that uh, skeleton made of cartilage. Oh, the French school is asking if we can take a closer look at a zebra shark. Absolutely. Let's see if we can pull up a picture of a zebra shark. These are a really cool animal. They are found um, uh, in tropical waters, so they are a warm water species of shark. And your first question is probably, why is it called a zebra shark? I have never seen a spotted zebra. Um, but the reason it's called a zebra shark is because when it's born, it has stripes that are um, kind of like a black and white or a black and yellow coloration. And then here you can see um, them as babies. And then as they get bigger, those stripes slowly stretch out in two spots. And that's where we get that adult zebra shark, which is a spotted shark. Um, we'll go back to that adult one so we can take a closer look at some of their anatomy. We talked earlier about how they had those spiracles. So this is a type of shark that's able to sit on the seafloor and pump water over their gills. So they're able to keep breathing. They also have this really small mouth. You can see they've got this really tiny mouth. And the reason for that is that they have these really tiny teeth for eating things like shrimp. So what they do is they basically suck their food in. Um, they kind of suck it up from, from the sea floor. And they eat things like shrimp or small shellfish or maybe small fish as well. Um, so they don't have the same big teeth that we sometimes see with other big sharks. Um, another thing you'll notice is this really small dorsal fin. So this shark is not a very fast moving shark. It's a pretty slow moving shark. And then do we have any pictures with their tail or can we go back to Shark Lagoon and see? We'll see if we can see their tail because they have this really interesting long sweeping tail and yeah, maybe if we go back to the baby, we can see it on the baby. Here you can see that tail. So the tail makes up almost half of their body. Look at how long that tail is. And that's because they're kind of a cruiser. They're not reaching really fast speeds. They just kind of use that tail to, as kind of a paddle when they move through the water. Very cool. We have any other questions? Oh, that's a great question. Audrey's wondering how you can tell if a shark is a boy or a girl. Um, so male sharks have two finger-like appendages under their body. That means that it's a male. Female sharks do not have those appendages. So, um, huh? Uh, I think, yeah. So that's how you're able to tell is by um, looking underneath the shark to see whether they have those appendages. They're called claspers. Oh, what's my favorite shark? That's a good one. I actually really like stingrays. So stingrays are a close relative of sharks. And when we talk about sharks, a lot of times we forget about the stingrays. And um, stingrays are understudied, so there's not very much um, money or study effort that's put into them. Um, here's one of our stingrays here at the aquarium. They're also... Um, uh, actually more severely threatened than sharks are. So when you look at the seven most threatened families of sharks and stingrays, five of them are stingrays. So um, they are even more threatened than sharks are. So um, I really like stingrays. Uh, special adaptations that sharks may have. 
Okay, so we got a question about what are some special adaptations that sharks may have? Um, so lots of sharks have lots of different adaptations um, that help them to find their food and help them to survive in their habitat. Um, I'm trying to think of some interesting, unique ones. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, so um, Luke is just mentioning dermal denticles. So most fish, because um, sharks are a type of fish, most fish have these really kind of delicate scales on their body. Um, they're kind of clear and they look almost like a piece of plastic. They're round. Sharks instead have a um, really heavy duty skin that's called dermal denticles. And so basically that means that they have skin teeth. And so if you look really closely at them, um, there's in, their scales are basically made up of teeny tiny teeth. And the reason for that is that it gives them extra um, uh, like armor, basically. It makes them a little bit more um, protected on their skin. It also helps them slip through the water faster. So it's more like hydrodynamic, so that helps them. Oh, we got a question. What is the fastest shark? Is that the short fin mako? That's the short fin mako shark is the fastest shark. I think Cynthia might be able to look up what the speed is for us. About 35 miles per hour. Um, and that is a, a shark that kind of spends more of its time out in the open ocean. So it spends less of its time around coral reefs like a lot of the other sharks we've seen. Any other questions? Oh, how many shark species do we have here at the aquarium? That's a great question. Um, that might be in our FAQ. We might be able to find that. Well, we'll get back to you on that one, how many shark species there are at the aquarium. We've gotten a chance to see our um, tropical sharks. We also have several more temperate species of sharks, like the ones you would find here in Southern California. Average lifespan for sharks is about 30 years was another question we got. I want to take a second. I was mentioned that my favorite sharks are the, are the rays. I want to take a second to talk about this particular type of ray. Um, I know it looks kind of like a shark. It has the tail of a shark, but it actually has the body of a stingray, and it is classified as a ray. Um, this is a bowmouth guitar fish, but it is a member of the group of rays called rhino rays. Rhino rays include giant um, guitar fish and wedge fish, and um, it's a group of 16 species of rays, 15 of those species are critically endangered. So that's just one step above extinct. 15 out of the 16 species are critically endangered. Um, so there's not much that we know about them. Several of those species have actually only been seen in fish markets. They've never been seen in, an in, um, in the ocean. So um, here's another one of a bowmouth guitar fish from the underside so you can see their mouth. Um, so what we need to do at this point to protect them is to help to raise awareness and spread the word about them. So um, they're in this position that they are because they've been overfished um, in a lot of countries. So we need to just raise awareness about them so that people can know that this is a, another really desperate conservation issue and another animal that's really close to extinction. Um, any last question? Yes. Oh, that's a great question. So we had those remora attached to the whale shark. Um, so these are this is an example of a symbiotic relationship. So the remora basically just gets a free ride from the whale shark. There's another one here. Um, they don't think it impacts the whale shark at all. They don't think that the whale shark is really getting any benefits out of it. Um, but the remora might get a, a free ride, maybe an easy meal. Um, but they're often seen attached to larger sharks. Um, sometimes they'll even attach to things like boats. So... All right, so I guess we have about 12 or 13 species of sharks here at the aquarium. Um, not sure exactly what that number is, but about 12 or 13 different species. And we have our bamboo sharks. We have like over 100 of those. So there's quite a few sharks here. Oh, that's a great question. We got a question about whether sharks recognize each other and whether they form a community. Um, so sharks are not really social animals. So they typically spend most of their time in solitary areas. Of course, they do come together for mating and then sometimes for feeding. There are also some species of sharks that will travel in schools. So things like um, scalloped hammerheads and great hammerheads will often travel in schools. Um, and then some things like our bamboo sharks will kind of clump together during the day. Um, <laughs> these are some black tip reef sharks. Um, but most sharks are more solitary animals. 
do sharks have night vision? So sharks do have pretty good vision. Um, it's you know, not like night vision or anything fancy like that, but they do have pretty good vision. They spend a lot of their time hunting in murky waters and um, at dusk and dawn when it's a little, when the lighting is a little bit more difficult. So they do have pretty good vision to be able to find their food, but they also rely really heavily on other senses, especially their sense of smell and their sense of hearing. Their sense of hearing is actually um, surprisingly important for their hunting. Any other... Is there any way to tell a shark's age? Um, I, you can tell, get an idea based on size, obviously. Um, but once they've reached a certain size, there's not really um, a way to tell that I know of. Not when they're alive. Not when they're alive. Um, can you look at the ear bone? Oh, okay. So, the, so um, Luke is reminding me that with the Greenland shark, the shark that we talked about earlier, um, where it lived to be about 400 years old, they were able to use carbon dating to figure out how old it was. So um, a similar method that's used for um, things on land, they were able to use that for our Greenland shark. Okay, so we're there, we got a question about are stingrays nice? So stingrays kind of get a bad reputation for using those stingers. They only really use them to defend themselves, though. So they use it um, if they're feeling threatened. They might use it to protect themselves from a predator. Um, and the other question was what, why sharks and stingrays are endangered. Um, they are threatened by overfishing. So they take a really long time to reproduce. And when they do reproduce, they'll have very few young at a time. And that leads to... Um, them basically not being able to replace themselves and reproduce at a fast enough rate. So because of that, they are um, really susceptible to things like overfishing. All right, I think I have time for one more question. Oh, we got a question. Are whale sharks sharks or whales? Um, that's a good question. So whale sharks are a type of shark, and they are the biggest fish in the ocean, um, but they eat the smallest food in the ocean. So just like whales feed on plankton, whale sharks also feed on plankton. So they swim through the water with their mouths open, and the water goes in through their mouth, and then it actually goes out through their gills. And while it's passing over their gills, they have this um, this body part inside their gills called a gill raker um, that basically filters that food out of the water. So whales use baleen plates in their mouth to filter their food from the water. Whale sharks use the gill rakers um, over their gills to filter the water or the food from the water. All right. Well, thank you so much, students. That was a great session. We had lots of really great questions. Um, we are going to be back at 10 a.m. with another Aquarium Online Academy session. So um, definitely tune back in at 10 a.m. And um, if you have any last questions, feel free to text them. We'll do our best to get to those questions. Um, Huh? Oh, yes. And student um, teachers, if you've been observing with a class, if you could please text in how many students you have watching today, that helps us to make sure that we are accounting for how many people we're reaching, basically. So please text